Panasonic has been producing PDC cameras for many, many years, offering some of the most advanced models on the market. And we have integrated nearly all of their cameras and support hundreds of commands, many of them tailored to specific models. And this makes our universal RCP and PDC controllers feel like they were designed specifically for Panasonic cameras. And in this video, we'll be looking at a new configuration made for the RCP Pro, which is designed to take advantage of the advanced features in Panasonic's high-end PDC cameras, including the UE100, UE150, the amazing UE160, and the UR100, which is an outdoor camera, if you haven't noticed, because this little wiper that you normally only find in the windshield of your car is of course designed to wipe away rain from the lens. So this camera, quite unique, you may not have seen it before, is uh, also one of these high-end cameras. Of course, we can turn on and off and change the speed of that wiper. And let's just move right to that, because on this config, we have 17 pages of stuff. Did I count correctly? No, 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 no. Okay, so it was, yeah, 17, yes, because we have five on each. Anyway, outdoor menu, go straight to wiper speed. I can also change it to fast. So now you'll see it's going quicker. And I can also turn it off completely. So, specific parameters. You won't find a little wiper tile in your config for your average camera because it doesn't exist. But we put it in here because it does exist for this model. And that is how we customize our controllers to give you an experience that is very much aligned with the equipment you're controlling. I also want to show you the joystick pad right here because that is your PVC joystick for convenience movement of a camera. Now, RCPs are generally designed to sit in a bay with other RCPs controlling other cameras. You have an operator who uses the joystick here to control the light intake, the eye race of the camera, so that he can match cameras, he can also adjust the colors, and that's what we'll look at. And being able to actually move the camera is like very, very convenient from time to time. And you can see it, it, it works quite well. You can have it like slow speed, you can also have it really like high speed. So it is super, super convenient having a joystick on your SP. But now we have a nice cropping of a little um, uh, lineup of um, fantasy creatures over there, and uh, we can look at the joystick, because that's one of the most significant features of an RCP. That is Skahoy's market-leading joystick here. Nice display on top that will show you readout of the f-stop values of your lens, and you can adjust your camera in this way. You can also push the joystick for joystick override. If you do that, it will send a signal to a router somewhere. You can configure which router that is. You have all the options on the market, and you, of course, have a ring to also control the pedestal of your image. So you uh, you see that value change over here and it's also hidden inside the menus which we'll now enter into. It is possible to control two cameras because I have another one on the table today which is the um, UE150 and I can also move that with the PDC joystick if you want to see that but mostly I want to show this to you as a means of just demonstrating how the knobs they are sort of giving you access to the same options because both of these are high-end PDC cameras, but I also, you can see how the values are different. And from time to time, there's also different content inside. So if we go to the exposure menu, you'll notice that as I go to the UE150, there's actually a parameter missing right here. And that is because it depends on what the shutter speed value is. Now, it turns out that the uh, UE150 uh, has different values or the value behind synchro is a different one that is being used on the UR100. So this is how these can be different. But let's explore the home menu. No, wait, the exposure menu for a while. Because on the home menu, I want to show you uh, at the end how we can add our own parameter to it. Because the idea of the home menu is not that you have unique things there. It is that we place settings that uh, is like the most relevant for you in, in a standard, um, on any standard day. And you can customize that. You can actually customize any of the menus, but the home page is designed to be you breaking out redundant parameters that are also found deeper inside the menus. If we look at the exposure, we have, of course, manual iris, which we have just been using uh, with the joystick. But now that I change over to auto, notice one thing, this tile, the iris offset shows something else. And uh, it is showing yeah, the offset from an automatically 
um, detected uh, iris value. If I go back, it actually does show the iris value from the joystick here. And it's called abstract value because it is a 12-bit number from 0 to 4095. And um, it is kind of the internal value of it. We show it because sometimes you can move the joystick and not see a change in the f-stop value, especially in the, in the lower ranges here. But that is actually underneath things going on on this value. So it might be useful to you. If we look at the shutter speed, we have different modes. And for the UR100, we have off. So now we are not having any manual shutter we can also use this one the step mode where we just set the value we can also use synchro where you can synchronize it with frequency of blinking lights or screens or whatever and then we have the elc where you essentially let it adjust this automatically but you set a limit to the shutter speed so um that's the shutter speed menu and now let's move on to the color menu where you find red blue and gain what is that? That blank tile? Well, it's the green gain. The green gain is just not available on this camera, but if you had a UE160, I think it has green gain. And therefore, sharing a configuration between pro PTC cameras, you will um, find that in this case, it blanks out because it's not available. And that is, by the way, why it's also missing on the homepage, but we'll come back to that. Pedestal, this might be your favorite view because this is usually what a PTC operator will have up as his home screen. So you can choose this as your home screen and you have now direct access to these. And notice how we added colors to the rings behind the encoders so that you can actually quickly identify, okay, red, blue, green, and red, blue, and green, if we had it. We have also the master pedestal down here, which corresponds to the encoder ring that sits on the joystick. Yes, let's move on to Gamma. So in the Gamma menu, you have Gamma settings. Just take a quick glance at the display if you're interested, because I'm not gonna demonstrate it. The same is true with knee. We also have knee settings. Once again, notice two parameters are not controllable. You see the values, but you cannot change them because we are in auto mode. If we go to manual mode, you can change them. Sorry, this up here. And if we go back to auto, now they are uh, actually shielded off again. Um, why did I show that? Because again, this is us knowing quite intimately which parameters are available when, when the camera is working in a different uh, specific way. So we spend a lot of development resources onto making sure that we're very much aligned with the camera's way of working. This is the matrix, the linear matrix, where we have matrix RG, RB, GR, blah, blah, blah. These names come straight out of the camera. This is what Panasonic chose. And that is also true for the matrix saturation and matrix face. Those labels you see in the display are Panasonic's invention. Our invention is to add colors to the backlight of the encoders. Why? Because it allows you to more, you know, visually guide yourself to the knob that you need. So we hope this is helpful and useful for you. And if you move on to the uh, saturation matrix, we can also show how holding down the shift key actually becomes now a page toggler. So we are now paging between two pages. Either we see the first eight settings or we see settings nine through 16. And again, we are using colors to tell you something about which these, um, what these parameters are adjusting. Now, we are not going to actually look at the results of this a whole lot. Or maybe you can see some changes, but I'm not going to def defend my changes. Rather, I depend on you being the coloring artist looking for a tool to know and understand what this is about. And we are just trying to make your life as easy as possible by coloring the background lights of the encoders. For the matrix face, it's the same, sa same coloring, same principles that drives this display. Moving on to the image menu, you have uh, settings related to that. A shift key is enabled so that we have additional settings in here. And I may think that if we know, okay, that is kind of the same between these two cameras. But once again, we sometimes have a shift level, which is indicated if this one is lighting up in teal color. Okay, moving on to the details menu. Uh, just some details. We don't want to go into that in this video. The same with cropping. Cropping would be more relevant to show on a PTC controller because there you are concerned with the uh, cropping of the image and not so much with the coloring. Moving on to presets. Again, this is related to PTC control where you can recall presets and you can set speeds of it, etc. We have on-screen menu. That is a nice uh, way to get out of a picky situation. If uh, something is not broken out on the RCP, you can actually enable the on-screen menu. And with that, you can scroll forth and back in this menu. You can also select any of these by pressing enter. Then you can scroll on. You can then return again if you want to. And then you can also disable it all again. You can do that for these cameras too, if you want to. We have PTC control in here. Again, PTC related settings. We have the menu where we have also settings for various stuff inside the camera. Just take a look at the display, you'll know. And then we can move on to this one. We have an audio page. 
Now, audio and P2C cameras, um, yeah. <clears throat> but in this case, for instance, there are some settings like uh, we have uh, phantom power apparently in this one. We also have a volume, uh, audio volume A, which is broken out on this tile. And if you move over to the other camera, you'll see that in the uh, UE150 camera, apparently many of those are not available, but another two are apparently available, which seems to depend on something I'm not clever enough to understand today. But apparently those two tiles were used for some audio specific to that camera. Moving on to the outdoor, we see features related to the UR100. Uh, 100, and if we go to the um, UE150, you actually see that the menu completely blanks out. It's falling back currently to uh, something else like the home screen, but right now this is not available. Why? Because it's not an outdoor camera. So when we are in the outdoor menu for this one, we see very specific settings for this one, like the defroster, like a heater, like the wiper speed we just experienced, and also the, the washer uh, for um, the we are able to trigger the washer. It has like a little sprinkler inside so you can actually pour fluid on it and you can clean the lens with some alcohol or whatever. Um, we have not tried that and we are not gonna do it in, in, in this video, uh, but that's all in this menu. Now I wanna turn our attention to Reactor. Reactor, this UI, runs straight out of the RCP Pro. There's no computer in between, nothing hidden in a server room somewhere. This one talks straight to these two cameras. And if you want to change how this one behaves, you do it in a web UI pointed to this device. That's what you see right here. Two cameras are currently set up. IP addresses typed in. They have IDs. Notice that. ID number one, ID number two. This is how we distinguish them from each other, all being Panasonic cameras. And if you open the camera selector, you can see that for each of these, I have chosen a configuration called Panasonic PDC. Uh, high end. And if I just search up here, filter my list of configs that I could choose, it is evident that there are a few other Panasonic PDC camera configurations. We have something called mid range, which is designed for a different range of Panasonic cameras that has other features, maybe not as many as these, but just uh, a little different. And for, for if you own one of these mid range cameras, it, that would be a better config. But the high-end config is the right one for the three or uh, four models that I mentioned today. And then we have the generic control, which is probably even more basic for like all Panasonic cameras. But then you wouldn't have access to the uh, uh, matrix settings, for instance, or whatever. So that is an example of how flexible this is. And if you had two, a mid-range and a high-end camera added inside the same controller, you don't have to run the same config for those cameras. You can choose the one that fits it the best and it will affect the menu and everything else. It's also very easy to change this one into camera number one, camera number two, and it will immediately change in the display to reflect the name that you decide to give it. So this is also a very, very uh, cool home screen settings that you can do. But I promised you that on the home screen, we want to change what is in this tile up here, which is currently not used. Why? Because this is not a camera that has green gain. But we can utilize that by simply pressing here. Now, first of all, notice that in this setting, if you use the section called camera adjustments for this configuration, then you basically get a chance. You can see that in the selector down here. You have pages, all these pages we are talking through here. Those pages are available down there. And as I'm pressing through on the RCP, you notice how this is actually changing inside of Reactor. So it is listening to what's going on on the RCP. And going back to the home screen, we are now here. I press encoder number four. And now I need to do a little trick though. And that is to click active behavior because um, Behind the scene right now is some sorcery going on that will actually show red, blue, uh, green, and blue gain depending on which model is there. Anyway, press that link. I see that the underlying behavior assigned to this encoder is called color gain G for green. And I wanna change that. I wanna change it into ND filter selection. So I'll just type in ND filter in my search area and we see that it pops up as an available parameter for the UE150 and the UR100. I'll select it for the UR100. But notice one thing, we now get device ID number two and the consequence of that is, and let's first try it, ND filter on the UR100. You see it's there and it's working? Yes, all right. What happens if we change over to the other camera? Now I don't have picture out of that one, but if I change the filter, ha! I'm still seeing it happening on this one. Why? Because the device ID was fixed to two 
And it should rather be driven by a so-called variable that behind the scene is, is actually changing between ID 1 and ID 2. So when I use the camera selector, what also happens is that I'm changing the device index, a device ID between camera number one and camera number two. So what if I remove this value and it falls back to using the variable that is automatically updated as I'm changing cameras. And now all of a sudden, notice that if I change ND filter now, yes, I am changing ND filter on this one, but if I change it over to the other camera, you will not see any change on the UR100 because now the command is directed over to the UE150 instead. And that's how you can customize everything inside of Reactor if you want. It's very easy here. You can basically pick any of these encoders and assign or change the function that is assigned to it, like focus max or the iris value or the color temperature or whatever. Just press change behavior and pick something else. Make sure it's driven by the device index instead of a hard-coded ID. If you're invested in Panasonic PTC cameras, you can confidently choose a Skahoy RCP Pro or a PTC controller for a flexible and future-proof controller control experience. And our deep integration ensures that you are well covered. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to our channel. You can also follow us on social media or you can reach out to our sales and support team. Links to all that are in the descriptions below. Thanks for watching.